Hello and welcome back to Red Hat Summit Ansible Fest here in lovely Denver where theCUBE is broadcasting wall to wall and breaking down all of the announcements and digging in to this thing that we call AI, open source, and how you actually bring cloud native together, which actually brings us to a really good place. I'm Rob Streche, this is Paul Gillen. We got Rebecca Knight floating around as well. She'll be back on in a little bit, but we're really happy to have James Faulkner, who's the Director of Product Marketing for Runtimes at Red Hat, joining us. Because really, it's about how you get up and get these cloud native apps going. And I think you have a very interesting perspective of some of the stuff you're dealing with in general that's production, and some of the things that are coming in the near future. Absolutely, so I'll start with a little bit of a couple of numbers and some context. So we've done research recently that shows 80% of the, those we surveyed are going to modernize over half of their apps in the next two years. Wow. So this is a very, very timely, a very compelling event uh, for not only Red Hat's customer base, but just the larger apps in, in general. Um, and the other interesting piece that came out of this uh, survey is that over 75% of them intend to use AI to do one or more aspects of that modernization. Um, the challenge that we face is the economics of really essentially changing an app, burning it down, rewriting it, have not been very favorable. Uh, so a lot of companies, when they modernize, they're looking to move applications, but not necessarily rewrite them to take advantage of some of the more cloud-native capabilities that they could be because of the cost prohibitive factor of that. Yeah, no, I think that that's exactly what we've been seeing. And I mean, we talked about you know, a lot of things in the lead up to this uh, interview. And I, I think part of it was, I, I was in a financial services company. We had a application that was written by an intern that ended up becoming production. Yep. And it was on NT4. And this is after NT4 was gone. And we spent a phenomenal amount of money supporting it, but we were too scared to then go and modernize that. How are you seeing and what tools are you bringing to bear to help organizations that are in that same you know, paralysis analysis phase yeah. about modernizing? Because it, it seems like AI would be a, a typical, and people have talked about using AI to do this for a while now, oh, yeah. but you know, over a year, but where, what are you seeing? So there are tools that, you could, that can help in this regard. Um, this is Red Hat, so naturally we're open source. Uh, we have, uh, championed an open source upstream project called Conveyor, that's with a K for Kubernetes, um, really designed to facilitate onboarding applications to Kubernetes, uh, and of course from Red Hat perspective with OpenShift, um, but it also is a place for incubating tools to help with this. One of, one of those tools, an early on tool, was called Windup. Many of you at Red Hat were probably familiar with that. Um, this was a tool that did what we call static code analysis, and it would essentially just look at your code find lines of problematic code, depending on what you're trying to do, whether you're upgrading to a newer version of uh, JBoss, or whether you're, you want to move to a new version of Java or some, something else, and tell you what needs to change. And then it's up to you to make that change. It's up to you to test that change. It's up to you to get that change in, into production. Um, so what we're doing here um, with uh, Conveyor is introducing a new tool called Conveyor AI. And this really takes advantage of the groundswell underneath AI um, and brings a different and novel way of doing this modernization. Because you can take an application and just ask, L and ask an LLM, you know, what's the next best thing I should do? And it might give you a few suggestions here. It does not know any of the patterns that, you see, that, it, that you've seen in the past doing modernization at a particular company. So with Conveyor A, we're able to uh, take advantage of a lot of the, the history of an application modernization and not just ask it for the next best action. Now, IBM has Watson Code Assistant. Is, is Conveyor associated with that? So, Conveyor, so IBM Research is actually one of the partners in the Conveyor community. Um, and we, you can use, so Conveyor AI can use this Watson Code Assistant underneath as that foundational model. And again, uh, what we also are doing, which is very new, um, is taking corporation data, so historical data about other fixes that have happened through things like uh, GitHub pull requests, um, Jira issues, uh, the static code analysis that I mentioned earlier, and we're taking all of that and using the, the RAG pattern, the retrieval augment generation, to improve the prompt that we send to Watson Code Assistant, so that what we get back is not just awesome Java code or awesome C code or awesome whatever code we're, whatever, whatever language we're using, but it also takes into account all of the past history and all of that data that's extremely valuable to companies 
um, and uses that to improve the results so that a developer who's working in their IDE will see the result and see, oh, I need to make this change because our corporate you know, a policy requires this particular change that uh, a base foundational model would not know. Yeah, I, I think that to me is what's really interesting about this. And again, being part of that open source community and we were just at KubeCon, you know, feels like last week, but it was actually a couple months ago now. Yeah. When you start to look at it, all of the things that are moving around, and this is a CNCF project. Yes, it's a that was, CNCF sandbox project. And, and it used to be called Tackle, and it's in sandbox now. How did we get here with, with you know, yeah, so conveyor? I think, so I think uh, with conveyor, so we've, we've done a lot of research in the conveyor we've, uh, project. We've worked with a lot of customers, uh, not just Red Hat customers, but also other customers interested in conveyor and interested in, in um, contributing tools to that, and we've, we've, we've learned from you know, the challenges they face. One of the challenges, for example, was not the static code analysis that we had already completed with the windup project, but it was doing large scale modernization efforts at companies and uh, getting more metadata about the applications. You know, are the developers still around? Do you have a, a, a mature CI pipeline that you're delivering, or CI CD pipeline you're delivering to production? We can ask these all in a questionnaire and then rank the applications in terms of the risk to the company of modernization or not modernization, and a number of other facets. And so it really brings a more systemic uh, mechanism when you add in these tools that we've learned from the Conveyor community. And that's really, I think, the power of Conveyor. And now with AI, we're just you know, really turbocharging that effort. Well, what kinds of applications are you finding are the best candidates for modernization this way? Uh, I would say any application. What we say, at, you know, I, that's a loaded term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we say is, is app modernization is not a one and done, right? It's a continuous effort. Um, and so the applications that um, I would say are you know, mission critical, um, the ones that have a, a huge performance impact or a performance problem, those are the ones that you really want to look at for app modernization. The ones where you're going to get the biggest return on your investment. Um, now, of course, the answer is always it depends. So if the developers aren't there, then you might make a different decision. But uh, by and large, it's those applications that bring real business value today, but have the potential to bring much more if you do things like move to modern cloud native frameworks, uh, move to platforms like Kubernetes and OpenShift, and then you can change how you deliver that software to production and, and get business value in that way as well. Yeah, because, I mean, again, in your title, run times. Yeah. Help people understand that might not be as familiar. What does what does that mean at Red Hat? Yeah, so runtimes is it, it, it's essentially what runs your applications at the application level. So you have your infrastructure, you have your your operating system, you have your you know your silicon, or you have your cloud instances. Then you have your orchestration layer, things like OpenShift and Kubernetes. Then you have application frameworks and languages, and, and then the business logic sits on top of that. So our runtimes are that layer between the applications and the underlying orchestration system that provides things like uh, clustering, fault tolerance, single sign-on, um, provides uh, transaction integrity, things like that. Um, and so traditionally we thought of this as middleware, so runtime spans both traditional app server-based middleware as well as our uh, cloud-native frameworks, things like Quarkus and Spring Boot and Node.js. And there has to be, a, like you said, I think that we went through a lot of people trying to modernize, and there's been this, this renewed push because yeah. of AI and the hype around it. Yep. And I'll say the hype because there is, it, it, the reality of people actually going through and using AI to do that, they're a little scared because yes. they're trying to figure out where was it trained and things. It would seem that some of the things that were announced today would fit really well into joining in with Conveyor AI maybe in the future, and yeah. you could see this, because Conveyor AI is not a Red Hat product. Right. It's, it's open source, That's and correct. it's not even a commercial product That's at this correct. point. So how do, you, how do you see the things playing together, I guess you so, could say? So, yes, it's a great question. Um, so, the historical things, like you mentioned Tackle, and we also had WindUp, which is the static code analysis, those were surfaced to Red Hat customers through the migration toolkit for applications. It's one of a suite of migration toolings that we have. We also have migration toolkits for containers and also for migration for uh, virtualization. So these are tools that are designed to bring applications onto our platform. So with Conveyor uh, being the upstream to the migration toolkit, that's our path to essentially our, our go to market. I mean, it, this is a, a tool that developers and, and um, data scientists and people planning large scale migrations will use. 
that's where it will land, will be in the migration toolkit. Uh, uh, we're planning on bringing a packaged sort of uh, dev preview version in the conveyor community later this summer, and then we're going to look at moving that into the migration toolkit and combining it with things like the granite models that IBM and, and Red Hat uh, are, have announced earlier today. Um, the other aspect of one of the announcements later was that as you do and use this novel way of doing a modernization by bringing in through RAG, bringing in corporate data, right? As that corporate data grows and grows, that's the, that thing is going to get bigger and bigger. So at some point you might want to sediment that into the foundational model and fine tune the model. Um, this is where Instruct Lab comes into play, because Instruct Lab, you know, it, it provides a taxonomy and all the synthetic data generation. This fits really, really well with a large scale modernization effort because that's really what you're doing is you, you want to take the knowledge and skills that you've learned in the past to apply it to the, to the next modernization ap application that you do. And it really turbocharges and accelerates that large scale migration. Do you see large language models being developed that are specifically for migration? Uh, that's an excellent question as well. Um, yes and no. So one of the things that companies often look at is like, I'm not, I don't want to give away my data. Like, I want to keep it all in house. I'll use your foundational model. I might fine tune it, I might use RAG and hook it up to our internal GitLab uh, instance and bring that data in and improve the prompting, but I'm never going to give that, that, that you know, data away. Um, some will actually want to do that, but the challenge there is that the patterns you see in, in company A are oftentimes very different than the patterns you see in company B. So it may or may not actually be worthwhile to create sort of a, a, a community-based uh, migration tool uh, because a lot of the value proposition is in that corporate data in the, in the patterns that you see inside one company where they have a set of developers that made the same kind of uh, architectures um, which would apply to their applications but not necessarily to your applications. So there, there could be a middle ground there that, that uh, a community can, can develop. Yeah, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I remember one, one CIO at a big financial services firm once told me that he has applications in his shop, he doesn't know what they do, but he's afraid to turn them off. Yeah. <laughs> what do you encounter when you're going to do modernization efforts? Yeah. What, what are some of the crazier scenarios uh, you encounter? Those are, that's usually, I mean, that's par for the course, right? It's like companies <laughs> who the developers are gone or, uh, you know, or they, they, they outsourced the, the development and now they, they don't know what to do, or they're running like an ISV application that they don't even have control over and they, don't, they can't turn it off or they can't you know, make changes. And There's a path for that where you can go back to, uh, to an ISV and, and kind of put pressure on them to like, hey man, you need to modernize this thing. Um, but so we, we see you know, a wide range of reasons why modernization is challenging. That's one of them. Um, also, the, they, they look at the modernization and say, well, I'm not changing the application, so there's no new business logic. What's the value to me? Um, in a lot of cases, the value proposition for a modernization is in how that software is delivered, not necessarily what's in the application itself. So there's a, there's a wide range of reasons. And in the, in the research I mentioned, which is in, on conveyor.io, um, it goes through a, lot, a number of the different reasons why modernization can be challenging. Costs, just don't know, don't have the skills, um, don't know where to start. Um, you know, it, it, it spans a whole wide gamut. So, so, in the little time we have left here, put in a, plug for Conveyor and for people getting involved and organizations, because yeah. you've got a lot of your customers here and a lot of these customers are obviously into open source and <coughs> a lot of them, you know, we're not, like to contribute back to it. How, how should they get involved? Where do you see Conveyor going over the next year? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, so to get involved, go to conveyor.io. Um, that's our, our website. Um, there's lots of blogs and information about it. Um, you, can, you can contribute rules, so when I mentioned earlier the RAG pattern that Conveyor AI uses, one of the inputs to a prompt is a rule that was discovered in your application. And so if you contribute rules to say, if this application uses this API, here's how you should probably fix it and the reasons why, that is very valuable to the wider community. That's where we really want to see contribution is in rule sets for not just Java, not just .NET, but you know, a wide range of application uh, languages because we want to be able to support you know, transformations and modernizations across different technologies. Um, so, yeah, so I would say go to conveyor.io and get involved. There's, we have Slack channels, we have user groups, um, lots of places. And, and what, where do you see it going in the next year? So, I think that a lot of the work is going to be in uh, integ integrating tighter with LLMs, um, integrating with Instruct Lab as well, 
um, and improving, just improving the overall workflow, right? It's pretty early days. Uh, we have the IDE integration, but we really want to kind of bring it to that next level and, and not just show you how to modernize that application, but also bring it onto the platform and show you how to get that app into production safely and consistently. That, that's, I, I think that's a great place to leave it, and I, I really want to thank you because again, this is actually one of the things I've been saying is that uh, KubeCon is really Cloud Native Con, yeah. and they should swap the names around because you know Kubernetes is is there. We we know it's ten years old now. Yep. You know, yay Kubernetes, and we're we're all big supporters. But it's really the layer above it as you start to build these cloud native apps, and this this is right in that. Yeah, that this is a, it's a brand new way to do uh, a modernization using existing communities, but powering you know using uh, LLMs and, and AI. It's fantastic. Well, well, thanks, James, for coming on board. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And thank you for watching theCUBE here live from Red Hat Summit and Ansible Fest, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll be back with you in a few short minutes.